Why in this kitchen? It's been actually my, my dream since I was young. Yeah. A lot of effort's gone into this. There's big dreams hidden from this. I just want this to happen, that's all. I'm not even scared of it. <laughs> Today is our opening of our restaurant, Spanish restaurant, yeah, and it's kind of like stressful. I hope there's people who come and buy our food. Well, I met Randy about four years ago. He had this massive dream to to become a chef, and I've also had a similar dream when I was younger. So I started brainstorming it. And I started like thinking, like, what if since here in Mandela Park they, they didn't have a restaurant before, what if I can try to get those people on that side just to try to get inside here in Mandela Park and try to chat with the black guys around? How would they feel? Come in. Hope is uh, probably renowned for being a very split community. It's got uh, a coloured area, a, a white area, and a black area. The thing about the guys who stays on that side is like for us is to to work for them, to know them, and even for them is to to, to know us, is to give us jobs. White people won't enter the black area without. Uh, such substantial security. Because those ones just hate white people and just like, they say, you know what, boys, let's just go rob. You know, because those people, they got lots of minus. Now, um, we want to break some of that down, you know. That's, that's the main reason, is to bring like the coloreds, the blacks, the Zimbabweans, the white, just together to come and chow in one place. We like to integrate people. It is in the shack. We've taken a very dilapidated area and turned it into something quite exciting. Yo, it was hard before we came there, yo. We started doing the floors, started cleaning up, ripping up the walls. And everyone was like excited then. Like, what's happening here? What's happening here? There's gonna be a restaurant. Like, you a restaurant in Mandela Park? Yo. So that's why I knew when I came, this restaurant is gonna succeed. We've got Mac One here, who is a very well-known graffiti artist in Cape Town, and we've been trying for a long time to get him to come through because, uh, in our opinion, what he'll put on the front of Sabanya will draw so much attention. He's also got a real heart for upliftment and the community and that kind of thing. There's so much shit in life where people... It's so easy to sit back and not do anything. And it's so easy just to take what everyone, do what everyone else is doing around you. When the people that say stuff is negative, they can't do it, so they want you to achieve your goals. So, um, it's me. Yeah. And, and how do they respond to the, to the meals that they have? The business has slowly increased and people know who we are. And we get loads of return business, which is a really good sign for us. We want these tourists and Cape Town locals to experience as well as Mandela Park locals. They'll be able to see that in Hout Bay, a place that has an uh, immense amount of wealth and immense amount of struggle, that we were able to break down those, those cultural barriers. And we're trying to build what we call a rainbow nation. You know? So it has, you mustn't wait for someone else to come along. It has to be seen, it starts with you, it starts from you, you can make a difference. Because in Kosa they say, Isanda, somnye umdu, slambe somnye umdu. It means your hands can wash my hands. Cool, thanks. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Randy, who was the guy 
you see up there, he was my business partner. Um, he grew up with, uh, in a family where his father left at a very young age and uh, he had no father, his mother's an alcoholic. She would beat him and uh, his younger sisters and there was no real hope for Andy. He, c he couldn't read, he couldn't write. When I met him four years ago, uh, we were both volunteering at a church and we uh, ended up digging a baptism pool together and he, and he was telling me a bit about his life and how he wanted to become a chef. Now this is someone who could not read, write. He, like I was saying, he was abused by the, the, the support structure in his life. He had absolutely no hope. He wasn't going to go anywhere. But he had a dream and he wanted to change something. He saw that his community was separated in half a there's white people, there's black people and colored people and they don't really mix. And he wanted to see that, that change. Before he died four months ago, he was the owner of a restaurant. He, he went away to uh, be initiated earlier on this year. Um, and at his initiation, they told him, because now you're circumcised, you can't get AIDS. Um, it actually wasn't earlier this year, it was earlier last year. Um, he, he came back thinking that that was the case and four months ago he passed away. Now, what this is a reflection of to me, what this stands out to me, is that the leaders in our country, the people we look up to, the old madalas that are sitting there doing the circumcisions, uh, the people we've put in place to make decisions for us or to lead us and guide us aren't doing this. And so we have an opportunity as the young youth. We've got an opportunity look, to look further than, um, than the, um, the older people that we've put in those positions. Another example of this is, is alcoholism. We've got communities where our fathers, where our mothers are alcoholics. I can tell you in Mandela Park, every second uh, person is an alcoholic. Now these, these people are supposed to be leading us and guiding us into our future, but it's not happening. In the government, it's not happening. We have the government come and speak to us at UCT to tell us that they want to recruit us because they, they don't have enough money and they don't really know what to do with the money that they do have because uh, there's just not enough to go around. Now if I have the government looking at me, I'm not that clever, I'm ADD, I struggle with learning, and um, if I have them looking at me, asking me what to do with their money, then we know we have a problem. Because, <laughs> yeah, I don't know where to start. Um, and another thing is corruption. We've got, we've got problems with AIDS, we've got a problem, I, and I don't want to list all the problems to you, but you, know, you guys know what it's like. We have, we have um, Sangormas in our communities telling people that it's okay to rape babies in order to remove their AIDS. Now we've, we've got a lot of problems on our hands, but, but I think our biggest problem is the idea, is the problem with apathy. The problem that we all in, our, in this room are probably not going to do anything about the problem. We're going to keep looking at the government and expecting someone, that's why the title of my speech is that no one's coming to save us. We, we're looking for someone to come and save us and they're not going to come. We're all dying. My business partner's dead. And so we have an opportunity to, to, to stop for a second and realize that no one is coming and that we can be the solution. The people who have spoken here tonight are going to change South Africa. The people in this room here can change South Africa. We have it in us to do that. I've just been to Zurich to a conference. There are world representatives there. There were 15 people chosen from each country. Do you want to know who stood out amongst all those countries of South Africa? You want to see the people who were on the mics all the time telling everyone what they thought about the issues? They almost overturned the conference because it wasn't dealing with the issues that needed to be dealt with. Those are the young South Africans that were there. There are South Africans. I've got a friend who was there with me in Zurich. He used to walk 15 kilometers every day, so that's like Hart Bay to, town, uh, to Cape Town, to school every day, 15 kilometers. Then he would get his education, go back 15 kilometers. He's the only person in his whole village who got to go to university. He's now studying hematology. I don't even know what hematology is, but he's studying it. There's amazing things. 
the, the, there are people with a quality. All the people in this room have fought through things to get to where they are today. Fought through things that people in other countries aren't dealing with. We've developed a capacity and ability to suffer through hardship. The world is only now realizing that, the world, that things are actually quite tough and they need to start like, dealing with issues. Where are they going to look? They're going to look at the people who have fought through immense amounts of struggle to get to where they are now. And so, so we have a situation on our hands uh, where we are able to put, we as South Africa are able to put it on the biggest sporting event in the world. We're able to do that. But we're not able to look after our own issues. Now, I don't know if that doesn't strike you guys as weird. We have, we have issues. We've got crime. We've got poverty. We've got inequality. We've got race problems. We're able to put on the biggest sporting event in the world, something big countries struggle to do. And we can't deal with these issues on, on our own. We can't deal with our own issues in our community. So, so another example of that is, is that we've got... We've got creativity in our townships. We've got creativity amongst our youth. I go into the restaurants in the evening and I see the kids playing with um, scourers that you wash a pot with. They, the scour costs three rand. And during Guy Fox, there's all the white kids playing with big rockets or whatever that their parents bought. The kids light the scourers and they create these, like, these flames that go everywhere. It's the most amazing thing. That costs three rand. That's innovation. That's little children realizing they don't have anything and that they can create solutions which can fix their, their situation. There are hundreds of examples of that. All day, the, ways that, the way that we live in the township has innovative ways of dealing with, with, with problems. So I don't know why we can't ap apply this, like, well, we can, from the speakers that we've had here today. We, we, can, we can come together, we can bring our thoughts, and we can fix our problem. Because no one else is going to fix our problem. No one is coming with a white horse to come and rescue us. The government is not going to fix your problem. If you think they are, they're not. It's, it's a very depressing fact. But we've got to, we've got to all come together and, and find solutions together. So, um, so a question I'd like to ask is, is, where are the fighters that fought for our independence? We have people who were willing to die for our freedom as a nation, where are they? What happened to that fight? What happened to Nelson Mandela's fight? What happened to Steve Biko's fight? When, when apartheid ended, that stopped. I want to tell you guys, I'm willing to die for that fight now. I'm willing to die. I just don't know where all the other people are who are willing to die with me to fix that problem because it's not over. When, when we fixed apartheid and when that issue went away, we've got these issues every single day that we're facing. We're pretending like they're not there. And so, so, so I don't want to, again, I don't want to add a whole bunch of doom and gloom. I just like, there's this thing, Dina King scenarios, where they ask people, if you become disengaged from the issue, if we decide it's not our issue, someone else will solve it, our parents will solve it, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> what, what, what we need to do is we need to come together and we need to start solving these problems. So I've got a small solution uh, or a small idea of how it will work. I'm not going to take you through this theory of transactional analysis. And, um, basically, our biggest problem is that we've become victims. We had a persecutor, which was the apartheid government. For years and years, they told you that you're stupid, you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything, and we became victims. That needs to change. You guys aren't victims. You guys overcome the biggest obstacles like on an everyday basis but we can't apply that to fixing the problems in our country it doesn't make sense we need to stop looking for a rescuer and we need to stop being victims so we've got a choice we need to choose not to become victims we've got to choose not to become um, okay that doesn't make sense because I didn't explain the slide before we have to choose to become adults we need to step up and we need to decide that we can make a difference to this thing, so we break the cycle for our children. So, so I've, got, I've got a couple of simple steps you guys can take. The first one is we want to deal with the issue of racism. Do something about it. It's, a, it's simple. Invite someone you wouldn't typically invite into your home to have a meal, like we do with the restaurant every day. Invite someone. You cook meals every day anyway. Why not, why not ask the Somalian guy who's running the shop? I know it's a foreign idea, but why not invite him to share a meal with you? 
Trust me, that will break something inside of you. It will break something inside of him so that you develop a commonality and a closeness which can't, you, you can't find elsewhere. So share that meal, develop creative solutions like we have here, and bring them to, bring, like, uh, tell us about your progress. So come to the restaurant. What we do is we get black people together, white people, get them to discuss the issues, try and come to some form of solutions, and provide a platform for that to happen. So I'm going to put up my, my email address if anyone wants to write it up. And you guys can, can contact us, be part of that process. That's just one example of how one white dude in, a, in an area, one young black guy in, in a township, were able, to, were able to, to deal with one of the issues we have in our country. I don't understand why we can't get together and fix a whole lot of the other things. Because I think it's quite, I, I don't know, uh, yeah. <laughs>